Hi, welcome to the Andrew Buckle book review of A History of the Comic Strip. Now this is quite an old tassie, 1967 it originally came out, so it's really dated in terms of the period. Obviously this is a 1974 edition, uh, this is in English, whereas the 1967 one was in French. 250 pages and it's from Crown and you can see who it's by there, Pierre Cuprier, my apologies, and Maurice C. Horn. So <laughs> apologies for saying names completely wrong. And actually there's quite a lot of names in here that I would actually completely get wrong. However, I love these sort of old books. I've got quite a few that I've just picked up and they're just ones that you, you still can find them. And you can find them at comic marts and comic conventions more often than, and also in sort of thrift or charity shops, you can find them in there. You think, oh, and it, one of those things, if I see it, it's gonna be gone because I know two minutes later, it's gonna be gone again. I've done that too many times. So if you see something like this, worth picking it up, because I'll be dropping out of that. History of the comic strip, absolutely. And this is all newspaper comic strip. This is not, this is, this, well, created in conjunction with an exhibition of comic strip art. So this was, there's the details there. That must have been pretty impressive at the Louvre. Hmm. However, that was all the way back in 1967. I'm certain there's probably maybe, actually they did some, I've been watching some lovely on YouTube. There've been a sort of documentaries, about 15 minute news bits where you got like the French sort of the comic strip and you think, wow, they really were so in love with the comic strip. And they've got all these artists and things, and you've got like Neil Adams and Morbius and so on and so on. You look at it and think, wow, why can't we have those sort of shows and books and things? And the French also have got lots of superb books. I love whenever I go to France, it's one of those things you just pick up. Of course, they're in French, but it's still, the artwork is just superb. I can just about read French even if I can't say it very well. However, this book is if you want Bern Hogarth. I think that's how you say his name. If you love him, we well, yeah, love this book because his Tarzan work and whatever is mentioned a lot. And you've even got an introduction by him in this book. And it, this is, puts it here, Neo Dada, Pop, Op, Ob, and so on, Neo Dada. You know, that sort of thing. <laughs> it's going to be very obscure. And there are some really odd bits in this book, but it's still an absolutely fascinating. However, I love this, 1370. They are, that's how you, when you start, you know a book that's good. However, I don't really agree with them. I have to say, and maybe I'm wrong, but I've seen, Lots and lots of work, 12th century, whatever, and you see, you know, these manuscripts and things, and you look at the print and start the work, and you think, well, to be honest, they've got lots of these banners. Okay, maybe it doesn't look like it's coming exact, but it's still wrapped around people, and there's bits off there, and there's text. To me, I mean, I think you could really say that it probably predates predates 1370, one of the first bit, that's a good way of getting around that, because I, I think that was probably earlier, but that's uh, obviously people, historians will argue over whether that is a comic strip or whether it's not a comic strip. And also it's got some lovely, uh, Tom, I love these things. Absolutely, I love getting books and that sort of subject as well. Absolutely brilliant. And they're actually quite, you know, you, if you look at it and go through it, so you can actually still enjoy, though it's pretty rough, this one, a bit hard work, exactly. Uh, However, Little Nemo. Now, of course, Little Nemo's been done near enough to death in terms of lots and lots of reprints. And they're all, not all, I've actually had one that I didn't really like of Little Nemo. I've had some Little Nemo prints that have been amazing. And then you get sometimes you get books that are not so great. So it does happen. However, there's lots and lots of examples. Max and Moritz, don't ask me, no idea. So there's lots and lots of examples of strips in here. Uh, and also French ones, as well as some British ones, not many. And also some American ones, Yellow Kid, of course. You've got Yellow Kid, you've got here, Little Jimmy. And some of these, of course, are available on like IDW, Fantagraphics. They bring out these books, and I think they're just good. Cool. However, they always come out in very, very limited runs. So you might like get a 1,000 or 250 of these things, and that's it. So if you don't get them at the time, mm, it's pretty hard to get again. Oh, I love that. Little, little Nemo again. Just glorious, okay, a little bit more Little Nemo. But there's a lot of text. So you've got a lot of information about the period. This is obviously 1900 to 1910. You've got here the upside downs of Little Lady Lovekins and Old Man Mafaru. It's another. Okay, sorry. However, I'm certain it's pretty good. Looks unusual anyway. 
And this one, Le Monsieur Noir, Mr. Black. Periods of adjustments, 1910-1928. And it's just a game, you've got lots, of, obviously you've got Crazy Cat there, you've got uh, Polly and her pals, you've got some of the ones that do, do turn up. There's some unusual ones that I must admit I'm not familiar with, like uh, Minute Movies. Absolutely no idea. BB uh, Freaks, Freak Team. And this one, uh, Bonaventura. No idea. And of course, I've got some English, Rupert, Tiger Tim. It's like a little bit of English ones there. And then you've got some Bern Hogarth. I see some brilliant Tarzan there. As well as Harold Foster. And you've also got Alex Raymond. You've got uh, Milton Caniff. Caniff. Now, there's a bit of Marvel comic. There's a little bit of Marvel comic there. It's all piled up. You've got Captain Marvel, Human Torch. Actually, you know what? I've never seen that picture before. Should have done. But I've never seen that one. Looks like Iron Man's holding something up there. He's got his hands holding something up. I don't know, most, maybe there's a banner or something for Marvel Comics. And you've got this one here, Futuropolis. Looks good. There are collections around. I've been looking online, and uh, but there's sometimes, they're, they're, like I say, they're crazy prices now. And you think, no, Barnaby, Sad Sack. They don't, like I say, they don't stay in print as long as I, I'm, that's just the way it is, isn't it? I mean, uh, Creepax. Creepax? I'm not certain. However, you've got some of this work as well. And you've got, of course, uh, Morbius. You've got a lovely one here of Baby Cyanide. J.C. Forrest. Forrest. Production distribution. So you've got lots of information about all the, sort of how it's all production of these things, all about the balloons, lettering, faces, bodies, backgrounds, about the order of the work and all those sort of things. Whole heaps of stuff. Also about the various things about pseudo swear words, sources of jokes. Also, the size of the Sunday papers is a source of jokes for Americans. Unfortunately, we don't get that. We get very, very limited. If we've hardly got any now, hardly any sort of uh, thing. It's just always a pity. I would love to get those massive uh, cartoons with all the uh, strips. Just would be brilliant, but they just don't seem to exist in this country. Used to have them like Daily Mail or Daily Mirror, those sort of things. They would have quite a bit of uh, cartoons, Fred Bassett and, and those sort of things, and others. Tiffany Jones. I would love to see a collection of that. Though there is one, I've got one or two collections. So hard to get. Uh, this one is, uh, well, loads more examples. It's just uh, example after example after You've got some creep acts there, and you've got some, uh, obviously, more Harold Foston. Burn Hogarth as well. And more and more and more brilliant examples. Roy Crane, Frank Robbins. Actually, I was really quite surprised. I went looking for books about Frank Robbins. And there is there's no books, it seems. Collections or, you know, the art of Frank Robbins. What? It's so weird. There's certain artists that seem to be just like completely forgotten about. Or the art of Harold Foster. Weird. I mean, there's lots of Harold Foster books, but there's no art of Harold Foster. I think there's even art of Bern Hogarth, to be honest. It's just strange. You've got arts of lots of other artists, but not them. However, this one, you can see this sort of book, what this one is. Narrative Figuration. Don't even ask me. I'm so it sounds great when you when you actually read it. It's really some really good information there. But you've obviously got uh, Roy Lichtenstein there, and then you've just got the craziest examples. This one here is just Valencia Group Chronica. Remember them, Group Chronica, and you've just got examples of just really sort of two dimensional narrative images, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and just going for collages and destroyers of image, and so on and so on. This is just. The only thing it does lack is a bibliography. I love bibliographies at the back because the bibliography means you can then go off and look for another set of books because there's you think, oh, that's a book I've never heard of. Go and investigate. Sadly, it doesn't mention. It mentions lots and lots of brilliant comic strips and it's really worth checking this book out. Of course, one of the best books, Smithsonian Newspapers. Oh, that one, that's a brilliant volume. And I've just ordered another one, a treasury or something it's called, of, uh, of newspaper strips. And I'm looking forward to that. Hopefully that'll come at some point. So uh, that will be definitely reviewed and read through and thoroughly enjoyed, I'm certain, as well. I love those sort of things and uh, certainly absolutely 
brilliant volume. So really worth checking out. If you can find a copy, should be up to. But it's still, weirdly, reasonably priced. It's not like crazy prices. Very unusual for old books like this. But however, History of the Comics Rip, totally recommended.